coming to paperback and e-readers, John Haynes, Illuminati, the man who rules the world, takes on the head of the global elite in this action-packed, all-new John Haynes series adventure. Pre-order your copy of John Haynes, Illuminati on Amazon.com and online booksellers everywhere. Better get the cool slow, y'all, because we're having us a barbecue. <laughs>I got a chance to take a look at Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom on Max this weekend. And after watching Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, I have to wonder if this film was directed by James Wan or if James Wan is a pseudonym for Tyler Perry because Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom felt more like Medea goes to Atlantis than an Aquaman movie. Now, the first Aquaman was a cinematic masterpiece that was directed by James Wan and the visuals and special effects came together to create something extremely distinct that basically surpassed the DC Comics source material in giving us a story about Aquaman and giving us a fun action adventure that reminded me a lot of the old Indiana Jones movies from the 80s. And that film had really great energy from Jason Momoa and Amber Heard, who at the time had great chemistry together as they went on this adventure. And as we got into the world of Atlantis, we felt where we were immersed in a very, very powerful world filled with great visuals and great action. And we had one of the best superhero movies made out of the 20 teens. Unfortunately, the sequel doesn't even measure up to what Aquaman was as related to James Wan's original vision because unlike the original Aquaman film where you basically felt James Wan's fingerprint all over that film with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom, this film really feels lost and it feels lost because what happened with this film is that James Wan didn't have the room to go out here and tell the story that he wanted because Warner Brothers Discovery executives wanted to meddle in his film. And this is what has really undermined the success of many Warner Brothers Discovery superhero films ever since the days of Superman 2 when Richard Donner was fired off of Superman 2 and replaced with lit Richard Lester. And every time Warner Brothers winds up making a superhero film, what they do is start to meddle into the vision of the original filmmaker, undermining their creativity and leading to a series of very disastrous sequels. And that's sadly what happened here with Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom, at just like it happened with Superman 3 after in 1983, just like it happened with Batman Forever in 1995, and just like it happened with Shazam! Fury of the Gods and Wonder Woman 1984, every time one of these directors goes out here and makes a fantastic first film, what happens is Warner Brothers executives start to get insecure, and because of their insecurities, what they do is go out and start meddling into the production process undermining the creator's vision and giving us an absolutely terrible sequel that basically tanks the entire franchise before it can start to get any legs. And that's basically what happened here with Aquaman and The Lost Kingdom, a film that feels more like a Tyler Perry version of a superhero movie than an actual superhero movie. And Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom just is a jumbled mess of a movie that doesn't know whether it wants to go out and be its own story or if it wants to go out and try to copy many of the elements of the MCU. Now, what really makes Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom start off really bad is it just has a very jumbled direction and it has a jumbled direction because this film had multiple reshoots and it had multiple reshoots for multiple reasons, one being the complete insecurity of Warner Brothers executives and two, the overall scandal that revolved around Amber Heard as related to her civil lawsuit against Johnny Depp. Now, with that civil lawsuit against Johnny Depp, 
Amber Heard basically wound up being a major problem for this film's box office due to the alleged abuse that she was to have participated in against Johnny Depp and Warner Brothers executives fearing that their film would wind up dying at the box office due to Amber Heard's negative publicity scrambled to try to get Amber Heard cut out of this film and as they scrambled to get her cut out of this film, what they did was try to rewrite and reshoot this movie. Unfortunately, when they tried to rewrite and reshoot this movie, what they did was make the whole film completely disjointed because it feels like two or three different movies all together. And that makes it where this film really doesn't have any focus because the first couple of minutes of Aquaman open up with the with these navy um people going and they're trying they're not or people on a boat they're being hijacked and then we have aquaman coming in and then he's playing with his son and that really gives us again a very tyler perry-esque feel because we're going from really serious action to him playing with some action figures and that really doesn't come together to make an organic film that allows us to see who the main character is what they want or why should we care no we get this scene and it basically feels like the, they're trying to copy wakita tatati or whatever hakuna matata whatever his name is as related to thor ragnarok and trying to copy that comedy style unfortunately that attempt to try to copy that comedy style basically winds up throwing this film off in the first four or five minutes of the movie because with a superhero movie, either you, you pick your tone and you stick with your tone. If you want to do a comedy tone, you'd stick with that comedy tone. Or if you want to do an action tone, you make sure that you stay with the action and you make sure that you stick that tone is the one that is the one that you focus on. Unfortunately, Aquaman, like Tyler Perry movies, doesn't know how to set a series set a tone. And because it doesn't know how to set a tone, you feel like you're being taken in and out. And you're being feel like you're being taken in and out of different tones and it just feels like again two or three different movies instead of a singular movie and that makes aquaman and the lost kingdom frustrating to watch because we go from arthur being in this tone of having fun with his son for a couple of minutes to all of a sudden we get the hijacking scene in the beginning where he's fighting these guys then we go over to black manta who's just lamenting his loss as related to his father and wants to avenge his father. And that basically takes the entire movie off course because instead of us watching an Aquaman movie and trying to figure out what Aquaman wants, what we get is a movie where we find it's mostly all about Black Manta and his quest for revenge until the film decides to shift up once more and we get this whole story about Aquaman trying to deal with politics in Atlantis as related to what this whole thing with this Orisinium or whatever it's called and everything just feels just completely jumbled and uneven because what they're doing is a, something I did back when I was in my early 20s when I was writing the first John Haynes story now when I was writing the first John Haynes story back in the 90s I made a major mistake and thinking I could just keep rewriting the story and what I didn't understand at that time because I was afraid of making a bad story was I was making the story worse because I was not staying on focus as related to what the story is all about and that's what's happening with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom the writers just keep rewriting the story and reshooting it as they go along and as they rewrite and reshoot this movie multiple times, what we get are multiple different kinds of stories that don't really have a center focus as related to the plot. So instead of us getting one movie that's based on one vision, we get three or four different kinds of stories basically jumbled together into what's supposed to look like a movie and what they're trying to do for one part of the movie is try to make it be more like the whole Wakita to Hakuna Matata's vision for Thor Ragnarok and Thor Love and Thunder where they're trying to take Aquaman on a comedy bit and I, even for one frame of the movie 
they, the guy calls Orm Loki, uh, Arthur calls Orm Loki, which shows me how desperate and envious Warner Brothers Discovery is as related to the success of the MCU. And that really shows how this film basically lost its vision. And that's why I gotta say, this isn't really James Wan's movie. It's really Tyler Perry's movie under a pseudonym because James Wan in the original Aquaman had a brilliant vision for his film. And that was shown in 2018's Aquaman, which was a great mix of action and adventure that felt just like a DC comic come to life. But what we get here is something that feels more like a Ripaverse comic, which is jumbled, lost, and directionless as related to story with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. And by the time we get to the Lost Kingdom in the last 20 minutes of the movie, this film is just basically lost. And it's lost because the writers really just don't have the ability to go out here and tell their story because Warner Brothers Discovery's executives are just as insecure as Warner Brothers executives were back in 1979 when Richard Donner was trying to film Superman 2. They were f so insecure about losing the box office that they just meddled in that film to the point where Richard Donner couldn't go out here and put his vision of a Superman sequel on screen. And the same thing happened here with Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. James Wan couldn't really put his vision on screen. I mean, I, when I look at this movie, I don't really get that, again, that magic that came from the original Aquaman movie. No, all of that magic as related to the fantastic chemistry between Jason Momoa and Amber Heard as they're having the Indiana Jones adventure isn't there. The majestic world of Atlantis isn't there. The action and adventure isn't there. And all of it has basically been replaced by a bad storyline that basically starts to descend into levels of badness of old Hercules the Legendary Journeys episodes. I mean, the way Orm is presented basically made him look more like Eolus from Hercules rather than being Orm from the Aquaman movies. And basically, I really felt bad for Orm because he was basically turned into comic relief because what they wanted to do was make him into the next Loki instead of letting Orm Ocean Master be his own character. And the crap, I, the, the cherry on top of this crap cake, which is covered by diarrhea icing, is the fact that a Aquaman Arthur isn't allowed to have his victorious moment. No, that's taken away from him by Amber Heard's character, who basically emasculates Aquaman towards the end of this movie in the climax. And this whole overall film is just, it's one big hot mess, and it's a big hot mess of steaming of steaming diarrhea covered on a crap cake with a dingleberry on top as the cherry. I mean, this movie is just one of the worst superhero movies ever made. And it's just even, I, I'd say, as on that top level of crappiness with other bad films like Thor Love and Thunder and Thor Ragnarok. Yeah, Thor Ragnarok was a piece of crap, even though it was a part of the MCU because it we introduced this tone of overcompensating by trying to use humor in order, instead of telling a great story that stays true to the serious tone of comics, what we get is these writers thinking that they need to be funny when humor is not really something you want to put in a superhero movie with a serious tone. No, what you want to do with a superhero movie is yes, you do need little moments of levity here and there to break up the seriousness, but you don't need to go overcompensating by making everything a joke. And that's one of the problems that Aquaman has, is that almost every scene in the second half of the movie is a joke, which runs contrast to the first scene, the first opening act, except for the early bits of the movie. And the whole part of this movie, again, just feels like multiple movies smashed together, and not something with a clear vision because Warner Brothers Discovery wanted to try to go out here and capitalize on the success of the MCU by making a knockoff film. And that's not what made Aquaman successful. No, what made Aquaman successful was the fact that it wasn't an MCU movie. It wasn't like 
any MCU movie. No, we got one of the best pictures of Aquaman, who was a character that most people didn't respect from the comics, but most people respected the original Aquaman movie because it paid homage to the great stories from great artists like Nick Carty on the Aquaman book and Jim Apar and the late Jim Apar. Both of those men wrote some of the best Aquaman comics, not to mention it really captured the spirit of those great 90s Aquaman books by Peter David. And that's what really made the first Aquaman movie great. But with this movie, it just really takes us back to Super Friends level silliness on Aquaman and really shows us what happens when you have a whole bunch of people who are out here and they're just desperate to try to make a character the next big thing as related to their cinematic universe rather than letting that character have their own story. That's another problem I have with these cinematic universes is that characters aren't allowed to just be themselves and they're just another part of a cog in a machine and that's another problem I had with Tyler Perry's Medea Goes to Atlantis which is also known as Aquaman and the Lost Kingdom. This, this Aquaman character isn't allowed to be himself, isn't allowed to have his story. No, what they want to do is roll him off the assembly line like a Chevy Caprice but he comes across more like a Chevy Chevette, and sadly, this Chevy Chevette has all of the issues Chevy Chevettes used to have in the 70s and the 80s, and it's, it's not even a good Chevy Chevette. No, it's more like a base model Chevette scooter with none of the options and no air conditioning, and this whole movie is a big piece of crap. Sadly, this Lost Kingdom is one of the reasons why Warner Brothers Discovery lost so much money, and it lost so much money mainly because of more executive meddling, which undermined the entire DC Extended Universe, and I fear that James Gunn's Superman may suffer the same fate, because the greatest supervillain as related to DC superhero movies aren't the bad guys on screen. No, the greatest villain in DC superhero movies is Warner Brothers executives, and Warner Brothers executives have basically wound up taking down yet another superhero and took it down because these executives' insecurities basically ruined yet another superhero franchise. Now, if you want to pick up my first full comic, John Haynes at Death Store, you can find that comic in paperback on Lulu right now. And you can pick up a comic paper copy for the same price as it was on the 2022 Kickstarter. And if you want to pick up my first comic that I worked on with Bill Walko, A Steam No Good Deed, you can find that comic on Kindle for 99 cents. And you can also find it in the back of the A Steam Blast from the Past paperback if you want a paper copy. And if you want to pick up the books on the SJS Direct imprint featuring the SJS Direct universe, like the Isis series, the Steam series, the John Haynes series, the books of the Spinsterella trilogy, my vampire novel Eternal Night, and many others, you can find all of that action-packed fantasy fiction on Amazon.com in paperback and other online booksellers like Barnes & Noble, at Walmart, and Target. And if you want to get digital versions of those books, you can find them at other online booksellers like Draft to Digital, Google Play, Barnes and & Noble, and, uh, and not, not, yeah, Barnes & Noble, and the iBookstore. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Coming to paperback and e-readers, Isis Dark Incubus. The goddess next door gets enthralled in a romantic entanglement with an evil incubus in this all-new Isis series adventure. Pre-order your copy of Isis Dark Incubus at Amazon.com and other online booksellers everywhere. Now available in paperback and e-readers, EC Horror of the Hyena Woman. Elle's aspiring angel takes on a wicked werewoman in this action-packed all-new East Dean series adventure. Get East Dean Horror of the Hyena Woman in paperback and e-readers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.